One of our major problems today is to find an adequate, satisfying image of the world. The two images which we have been working under for 2,000 years and maybe more are what I would uh, call two models of the universe. And the first is called the ceramic model and the second, the fully automatic model. The ceramic model of the universe is based on the book of Genesis, from which Judaism, Islam and Christianity derive their basic picture of the world. And the image of the world in the book of Genesis is that the world is an artifact. It is made as a potter takes clay and forms pots out of it, or as a carpenter takes wood and makes tables and chairs out of it. Don't forget, Jesus is the son of a carpenter and also the son of God. So the image of God and of the world is based on the idea of God as a technician, potter, carpenter, architect who has in mind a plan and who fashions the universe in accordance with that plan. So basic to this image of the world is the notion, you see, that the world consists of stuff, basically. Primordial matter, substance, stuff, as pots are made of clay. Now clay by itself has no intelligence. Clay does not of itself become a pot, although a good potter may think otherwise. Because if you were a really good potter, you don't impose your will on the clay. You ask any given lump of clay what it wants to become, and you help it to do that. And then you become a genius. But the ordinary idea I'm talking about is that simply, clay is unintelligent. It's just stuff. And the potter imposes his will on it and makes it become whatever he wants. And so in the book of Genesis, the Lord God creates Adam out of the dust of the earth. In other words, he makes a clay figurine. And then he breathes into it and it becomes alive because the clay becomes informed. By itself, it is formless. It has no intelligence. And therefore, it requires an external intelligence and an external energy to bring it to life and to put some sense into it. And so in this way, uh, we inherit a conception of ourselves as being artifacts, as being made. And it is perfectly natural in our culture for a child to ask its mother, how was I made or who made me? And this is a very, very powerful idea. But for example, it is not shared by the Chinese or by the Hindus. A Chinese child would not ask its mother, how was I made? A Chinese child might ask its mother, how did I grow, which is an entirely different procedure from making. You see, when you make something, you put it together, you arrange parts, or you work from the outside to the in, as a, as a sculptor works on a stone or as the potter works on clay. But when you watch something growing, it works in exactly the opposite direction. It works from the inside to the outside. It expands, it burgeons, it blossoms and it happens all over itself at once. In other words, it, the, the, the original simple form, say, of a, of a living cell in the womb progressively complicates itself. And that's the growing process. And it's quite different from the making process. But we have thought historically, you see, of the world as something made in the, in the, the idea being that trees, for example, are constructions, just as tables and houses are constructions. And so there is, for that reason, a fundamental difference between the made and the maker. And this image, this ceramic model of the universe, originated in cultures where the form of government was monarchical. And so all those people who are oriented to the universe in that way feel related to basic reality as a subject to a king. And so they are on very, very humble terms in relation to whatever it is that works all this thing. I find it odd in the United States that people who are citizens of a republic have a monarchical theory of the universe. I once asked a group of high school children, what do you mean by a thing? And first of all, they gave me all sorts of synonyms. They said, it's an object, which is simply another word for a thing. It doesn't tell you anything about what you mean by a thing. Finally, a very smart girl from Italy who was in the group said, a thing is a noun. And she was quite right. A noun isn't a part of nature, it's part of speech. There are no nouns in the physical world. There are no separate things in the physical world either. But we, our consciousness, 
of the way we feel and sense our existence being based on a myth that we are made that we are parts that we are things our consciousness has been influenced so that each one of us does not feel that we feel we have been hypnotized literally hypnotized by social convention into feeling and sensing that we exist only inside our skins that we are not the original bang but just something out on the end of it and therefore we are scared stiff because my wave is going to disappear and I'm going to die and that would be awful we've got a mythology going now which as uh, Father Maskell put it we are nothing but something that happens between the maternity ward and the crematorium and that's it and therefore everybody feels unhappy and miserable you know, this is what people really believe today you may go to church you may say you believe in this that and the other but you don't even Jehovah's Witnesses who are the most fundamentalist fundamentalists they are polite when they come round and knock at the door but if you really believed in Christianity you would be screaming in the streets but nobody does you would be taking full page ads in the paper every day you would have the most terrifying television programs the churches would be going out of their minds if they really believe what they teach but they don't they hope they, they think they ought to believe what they teach they believe they should believe but they don't believe it because what we really believe is the fully automatic model myths underlying our culture and underlying our common sense have not taught us to feel identical with the universe but only parts of it only in it only confronting it aliens and we are I think quite urgently in need of coming to feel that we are the eternal universe each one of us otherwise we're going to go out of our heads we're going to commit suicide collectively with courtesy of H bombs and uh, all right supposing we do uh, well that will be that and it'll be life making experiments on other galaxies uh, maybe they'll find a better game.